here we will begin our study of engineering design where things do not move or we want to keep them at rest so there are these two kinds of uh, things that we design in engineering well, some things which move they are called as mechanisms and things which do not move are called structures and often the difference between these two is built into them for example here i have two assemblies uh, here i have three bodies put together just simple stick like things while here there are four of them and they are all connected by this kind of pin joints so the two can turn relative to each other and now if i apply a force say drag this okay then you can see uh, the assembly with four parts is moving which is forming a quadrilateral sort of while this assembly where we have formed a triangle refuses to move so this triangle forms a structure while this quadrilateral forms the mechanism that is a basic difference between these two so most structures that you will see will have triangle as their basic element because that is something that uh, is capable of holding its shape under uh, duress under the action of a force okay so to understand how to keep things still let us see uh, the opposite of it so what causes motion so motion is of two types one is called translation and it causes it is started because of a force and the other is rotation which often starts because of a movement let us see what these two are so what is translation and what is rotation so here we have an arbitrary body and we have taken three arbitrary points in it and let us set this into translation and we are going to observe the path followed by these three points so we are just tracing the paths here and uh, at the end of that we are going to collect those paths and we are going to superpose them and you will see that these paths exactly fit onto each other so that is the hallmark of translation in translation all points within a body trace identical paths while in rotation as you can see here uh, the paths could be different they are all arcs of circle but they will be arcs of different circles or different radii okay so that is the difference between uh, translation and rotation and now we also know uh, what causes them so these forces and movements are often called as loads they are coming from outside of the structure so they are external forces or external movements and they are called as loads now loads come in all uh, kinds of different uh, categories or varieties so depending on their origin we may classify them as dead load okay load because of uh, the self weight uh, wind load okay due to winds or flows of some kind uh, live loads loads because of things that are moving dynamic loads loads because of things that are accelerating uh, drag loads uh, because of a flow that is going past a structure or a body buoyancy force force because uh, the body is immersed into some fluid then we can also classify loads because of their distribution or based on their distribution say uh, point loads which are concentrated at a point or on a very small area uh, distributed loads are spread across a larger area while uniformly distributed loads are of course spread but in a uniform manner say surface of a road uh, is going to create a uniformly distributed load on uh, the foundation underneath uh, finally we can also classify them according to their variation some loads are cyclic they keep repeating themselves some load are static they just remain as they are uh, some are impact loads shock loads and uh, some could be pretty random okay so let us see the example <clears throat> let us see an example of loads various kinds of loads so here is a site at which we want to build something okay say a bridge of the shape now this bridge will be made of some material right so maybe masonry maybe stone so that itself is going to cause some load on this structure so that is self weight in addition to that we are going to have some uniformly distributed load on it 
say in this case the pavement of the road surface and then there will be various point loads so these point loads um, could be moving like say this horse here or people or vehicles or they could be uh, because of things which are at rest say uh, some lamp posts uh, then there are also going to be some drag forces because of say the water that is flowing underneath or maybe the wind that is going past it so these are uh, various kinds of loads that one needs to analyze and guard against uh, of course we will not be doing this problem in the most generalized of its forms we will be restricting ourselves only to two dimensional uh, problems okay so this might sound very restrictive that you may think well we live in a three dimensional uh, world and we create three dimensional structures what is the use of studying two dimensional things well uh, a surprisingly large variety of engineering problems okay uh, can be analyzed in two dimensions or as if they are uh, coming from two dimensional world for example this bridge uh, this will be uh, of course a three dimensional structure but imagine two such things in parallel planes and we can analyze them separately so we can uh, say take this part of the bridge and analyze it, it uh, analyze it as a two dimensional problem similarly we can analyze this truss given here so this is not as restrictive or as uh, uh, you know weak uh, a study as it might seem. Now we are going to study the equilibrium of objects. By equilibrium we mean that objects should be at rest. How to keep them at rest? What? Uh, how to prevent them from moving? And that is where we will start. Like how they move and for that we are going to uh, take all possible motions in two dimension and break them into essential components. So here are those components. Okay? The motion in two dimensional space can be split into these three components. One is the translation along x axis, translation along y axis and rotation about the z axis. Uh, let us see this in action, what these components are. So here we have a body, over here we have placed it in uh, x and uh, x y plane and uh, then we are going to set this into motion and let's see what kind of components we get so here is our first essential component it is translation along the x-axis okay. then it can also translate along the y-axis so this is translation along the y-axis a vertical translation and finally it can rotate about the z-axis so there are these three components of course they can occur together so I can set this body into motion so that the translation along X translation along Y and the rotation about Z all are occurring at the same time so these are essentially the components of motion that we need to arrest somehow okay so let's get back to our structures so if these are motions then let us see uh, what causes them or what causes the tendency of these motions if not the motion themselves uh, typically they are going to be loads they are caused by loads so there are going to be these external forces which will cause or try to cause these sort of motions so just like the motions we are going to uh, split the loads into these three components corresponding to these three types of motions say horizontal forces causing x translation or translation along x axis vertical forces causing or trying to cause translation along y direction and uh, the movement about z axis causing rotation so this is about the loads now although there are loads on our structure okay, we have to somehow counter it somehow uh, you know nullify it okay and that is uh, that is uh, summarized into these equations of equilibrium so if you want uh, your body not to start translating into x direction you better have all your horizontal forces add up to zero none okay so that's this first equation it says sigma which stands for sum of f x forces in x direction should add up to zero 
So sigma fx, that sum of all forces in x direction should be zero. Sum of all forces in y direction should be zero. That's the second equation. And then sum of all the moments about the z-axis should also be zero. Okay. So these three equations summarize the condition for equilibrium. Of course, for equilibrium that the structure to stand still, uh, we must have all the three equations satisfied. Satisfying just one or two is not enough. Okay? So all these three things together define the equilibrium of our body that we are trying to achieve in this case. Okay, so how do we achieve these equations? Having the equations, knowing the equations is one thing, but actually conforming to them, you know, achieving that condition is quite another. So to do that, typically we will be constraining our structure. To constrain is to restrict, is to straight jacket your uh, structure so that it is not able to move. And this is typically done by uh, adding supports to the structure. So supports uh, give reactions. Now this is an important point that supports by themselves cannot uh, counter the loads, cannot nullify the loads, cannot fight against the loads because loads are forces, supports are objects. You can cancel a force by equal and opposite force. So fight a force with another force, not with an object. So therefore support has to be strong to create an adequate reaction to the load that you are having. And this is an important point. Just having a support is not enough. And the example of that is very famous. We all know about it. Here it is. So what happened here? Here the support, the ground uh, was not strong enough. Okay? So on the right it was weaker than on the left. Couldn't offer enough reaction and the whole thing tilted to the right in this picture. Okay, so let us see finally what are the types of support. Essentially we will be dealing with three types of support. The first and the simplest is called as the roller support. Uh, this is its schematic. This is how we represent a roller support, not necessarily how we build one in real life. So here I have shown these two rollers. That indicates that on this ground which is fixed, okay, uh, this support is capable of moving because of these rollers and almost frictionless. Okay. Uh, then at the top there is this circle I have drawn. This indicates a pin joint. A pin joint will allow a, a kind of rotation. So if there is a rotational tendency then the joint or the, this particular support will not make any effort to stop that, to arrest that and as I drag on this piece attached to this support uh, you can see it is capable of rotating about the pin and it is also capable of moving along the ground. So in fact I am having a hard time uh, controlling this with my mouse because there is so much of degree of freedom. Or uh, Let us see what, what kind of reactions this first support gives us. So this gives us only a reaction in the vertical direction. There is no horizontal reaction, so no wonder it moves, uh, you know, uncontrollably in the horizontal direction, and there is no movement, so you can't arrest the rotation either. So let us see this second type of support now. This is called as the hinge support. Uh, you can quickly see the difference. The rollers are uh, gone now, so the support is directly attached to the ground. So it will not be capable of moving along the ground. So it is going to give us both these reactions. Okay? Reaction in the vertical direction, reaction in the horizontal direction. But you will notice that the pin that we had earlier is still here. And therefore, if there is a tendency of rotation, that will not be arrested. So the body is still capable of rotating about that pin. Okay? So there is still some movement possible. The third type of support, however, is the most restrictive. It is called the fixed support. And you can see here, uh, we have built our structure, a part of the structure into this wall or into the ground in some, some other cases. So in case of a fixed support, not only the vertical motion and horizontal motion will be arrested, but also the rotation. 
and this happens because there are these three reaction components present the vertical reaction the horizontal reaction and also a reaction in form of a moment and therefore all kinds of loads will be resisted by this uh, we'll see more of this uh, we'll put them uh, into some use to build some uh, beams and also trusses